Welcome to Welcome to Me, the platform that seeks to educate through play. My name is Letabola Kakumete and I will be your host for today's episode titled Decolonizing Education. My esteemed guests include Gizzo Seti, artist, musician and scholar of the arts, all the way from Kai Licha, Side C. And alongside him is Poking Sitai, writer, photographer and cultural producer all the way from the Free State, but based in Cape Town. Thank you so much for joining me. This episode will be divided into three sections. The first is the collective experience. The second is branding as cultural work. And finally, popular culture. Each section will have 10 minutes for me to ask the question and for you to answer, with two questions per theme. At the end of the episode, you will each get a chance to reveal which cultural organization you will be donating to in exchange for your participation. For our first question, as a cultural worker, why do you do what you do? I feel like your politics determine uh, maybe your arts, even your your vocab and stuff, Mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, Your ideological state is the one. That uh, controls you, whatever, whatever you say with, with your mouth. And then I think in my thoughts, you know, the consciousness was always in my thoughts, and I was like, let me reflect on how South Africa, how we came about. And also, my, my, my thing was based on the love and hate we have with the township. Mm-hmm. So, like, I still stay in the township even years after I was in the Ivory Towers. Then I had to reflect on how the township came about and also what's happening inside right inside the township no no we don't just write back what's happening people are killing each other and stuff there's reasons that you can find mm. in there then that swear game will go it became stronger and then within the theater i think uh the politics were like hey they say art is the reflection of society and then i was like now let me try to reflect my society my nice. reality and yeah. uh, i think so but also to raise the awareness of other blacks so that we strive together in this, in this, in this. Yeah, I don't want to eat other people's times. Yes, 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 yes. So I, I remember that and I remember attending your smile sessions. You know, that was that was always such a, 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 a joy to look forward to because it was, you know, black people coming together in this very white Eurocentric space um, and just, you know, having a good time. Honestly, having a good time. Um, thank you. Thank you for that very, very thorough yeah. answer. Um, Pugeng, can you give us your answer of like why you do what you do? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's a very broad question. Like, where does one even start, my little But you must, can you make it easier for me, please? <laughs> sure, sure. So, I mean, you know, we're coming, okay. we're coming here into the space as people who are in the arts and culture. Um, we you write or let me let me use myself an example i write um i work in a in a in a gallery space so i also you know kind of um am busy with like an arts and administration background i'm also a dancer so i'm a performer um and you know being the host of um, a platform like welcome to we um i i think the word cultural worker properly encompasses what it is that we do the many different roles that we do so you know out of all of the things out of all the busyness that 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 happens in your daily life and in your in your curatorial and 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 artistic life why is it do you do what you do i mean you can definitely speak to um your your projects that you're currently busy with now not the zeitz projects the 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 one that you are currently fundraising for so I'm an academic, and uh, that's what brought me to Cape Town. I'm a researcher. Um, my background is in the social sciences, and particularly in anthropology and sociology. I did an, I did my undergrad at the University of the Free State, where in, in social sciences I majored in anthropology and sociology. Went on to do my honors in anthropology, 
where I took an interest in how artists in Bloemfontein, black artists in Bloemfontein make a living where the uh, ecosystem is still to support white artists. So I was just curious about how black artists or black creatives are and just managing to sustain a living for themselves. And from there, I uh, went on to my master's at the University of the Free State in sociology in a program called the, Na- the Narrative Study of Lives. And with that project, I looked at how artists experience their creative process. So what I would do is that I had a long, series of long conversations with artists. I just talked to, spoke to them about their process, you know, what they go through in the, the studio and their making and stuff like that. After which I applied for a doctorate at the University of the Western Cape. My plan was to go, uh, you know, pursue a life of a photographer in Khaldim or something, <laughs> life of a visual artist. But then the PhD, I got accepted for a PhD and I just took that opportunity because I wanted to leave Bloemfontein. So what is it that I do? What I do, I mean, I think I'm passionate about, you know, people, I'm passionate about creatives, I'm passionate about people who like solving problems in a, in a creative way, visual culture or the visual culture field is where I work in because I'm a visual person as well. I speak, I, I, I speak, I enjoy people who speak through symbolism and who are creative in how they work with images. But I'm just a big, big fan of the arts, you know. I'm an art person, so I'm just passionate about the field. And whether it's being a researcher at science, doing a doctorate where I'm looking at uh, the, the field of cultural production or starting my own projects, it's just how my interest and um, interest is just, you know, going towards many outlets within the same field. So yeah, just being driven by my passion <clears throat> for culture, for the culture. Okay, okay, cool. Um, that's 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 very that's very interesting and it's very interesting that you are also kind of, you know, pursuing what you're doing through um the academic um field. Um I think uh, it's very relevant maybe for us to bring it back to the theme of um, decolonizing education. Um, many people struggled to identify with and connect with the um, you know, fees must fall movement and as a result um, undermined the physical, spiritual, emotional and mental labor that went into putting um, your body on the line like that. Um, you know, people came in, came together in pursuit of a better education, but also for a better society. Um, and there are many experiences that, you know, contribute to my being, you know, the best kind of cultural worker that I can be. Um, and so as a, as a tutor, I found it important to kind of look outside of the academy um, for ways to articulate certain experiences. And so uh, just to lead us to that video that I asked you guys to watch, um, I stumbled upon this video on Instagram, um, you know, during the thick of the pandemic, um, both here and in the States. It was a, a very hectic form of um, lockdown. Um, but there were two things that stood out to me about this video. It was, you know, the choreography and it was the message. Um, if someone truly wanted to understand what was happening in America within black communities, you know, without feeling hopeless, I would definitely recommend this video. So the main actor, or the main person is uh, someone, a rapper called Toby Ngwe. Ngwe, oh, Ngwe. there we go. He's, he's Nigerian, Ngwe. And his mission is to simply make um, purpose popular. So the video speaks about um, the realities of black life in America um, at the height of the global pandemic where institutional racism kind of finds people at their most vulnerable, you know, socially, economically and politically. Um, 
so I was, you know, particularly impressed by being in South Africa. I was particularly impressed by the creative efforts and the intellectual um, thoughts that went into this video. And it's definitely a resource. It's a, definitely a resource that I would recommend in a classroom setting, where you know I'd be teaching about something um, as complex as you know intersectionality, for instance. So you know, with that. Um, maybe we can start with you poking. What does decolonizing education in South Africa look like to you? Yeah, there's been a lot of work in in you know that has been put into place since then, you know. Mm -hmm. Um I can say one example is how I think from twenty twenty two, I don't know if it's already started, but like Swahili and I don't know what else I'm going to be taught in, in South African schools. So that's one thing, you know, starting at a grassroots level. Uh, another is um, funding going towards employment of black lecturers to teach, uh, to teach within the university. Also, there's been a lot of funding in the creation of curriculum that is suitable for the decolonial project. So what does decolonizing education in South Africa look like? I mean, it's a very tricky one because even if you put a black face in, in inside a university, you know, yeah, the education they got was still violent and the individual still lives with the memory of that violence, you know. And it's so entrenched that you can't even, you know, really point the, the violence out or the or the trauma out in the individual. So even it's a tricky one. But I just think on a more practical level, I think the question needs to be the question you're asking, yes, it's a very conceptual one because decolonize decolonizing education, decolonization and education together are very conceptual things, they're very loaded. Mm -hmm. But if I I think you're asking more for a practical answer. Are you? Or I'm asking for, you know, whatever makes most sense to you, especially being in the academy right now. I'm saying it's been five years since uh, the FMF. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of policy uh, to, you know, decolonize the infrastructure of, of the education or decolonize education at an infrastructural level. But that's, that's still very much too difficult for us to conversate about because, you know, I can only tell you what's been happening that, that I don't have power over. I can only speak to you on a practical level. So with the work that Kito is doing, the work that I am doing, when you have black people who are following their passion, who are learning from the Western canon, but also knowing that, the, that an African or black canon exists that has been erased, mm -hmm. and doing the work to look for those archives, to tell stories about those archives, not only through academic paradigms or, or academic vehicles or academic conduit, but through, the, through our own way. So Kito doing uh, hip hop, me starting a website or starting a project space, is me taking the part to my own hands, you know, and not necessarily waiting to write a dissertation, you know, because a dissertation is also a violent thing. If you think about how you, the, the word, the, the, the word, or the way you're supposed to write, how you're supposed to stick to certain um, restrictions or strictures or whatever, so it's about how we take in what's there and interpreting it or using it in our own ways. Mm -hmm. So I think decolonization is about how, decolonizing education is, are, is about how do we black people think freely about education. Absolutely, that that was beautifully put. I could not have said it better myself. Um, Kito, do you want to share your thoughts? If you remember when we, when we arrived at this uh, city place, uh, so we arrived 2014, Ask Tina, we we about coming from Elokshini, we were taught by black teachers, we were taught from Krish to primary to high school. Mm. And then we were always making jokes of 
uh, even getting taught everything in the course, or even English, we're taught in the course. Mm -hmm. So we're arriving at UCT, first things first, these people are arriving with their parents and stuff, they are carrying their bags and everything, and then it's white. I'm like, whoa, this thing is, uh, this rest is very tall. Imagine now I have my own, 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 own room, uh, own bed and, and stuff. Yeah, but it's, it's tall, this thing. There's white people that are, have a good chance of sharing their place. Now, we, apparently, there's a thing called a dining hall. So, we'll be sharing a dining hall, we'll eating in the same place, and we'll sitting in the same place. This is life. This is life. It's beautiful. I wish my friends could see me, my friends could come here and see how I'm living this life. It's nice. <laughs> there's a problem. Oh, go back to that joke. Because now, when we, when we go to campus, we're getting taught in this thing, and then we have to think on our feet of the H elder. Now, we have to first translate what we are getting taught. Because uh, uh, we translate it to his course and then we think our answer, we translate it to English in our brains and then we take it out to give it to the lecturer. I don't know for whatever funny reason, me and Matt, who did philosophy, our friends did some geographical things. And we felt like that philosophical thing, it was difficult. Yeah, we did it and we did it. So, uh, what I say is that when we arrived from this place, it's fascinating. This is England for us. Yeah, but we've never been to this side of the town because we're always there on that other side where we come up because you know the demographics of Cape Town when you walk through the N2 yeah because it's shacks 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 and then it starts after Kukule to six 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 and stone houses is a stand and yeah nice houses because mm -hmm. then you get to your city now like whoa this is nice this is nice but then again actually we're not surviving in this place yeah but there's something wrong we find these people of Maskole, Siyajita, Matabile, Kululua. These people now are talk, talking to us about black consciousness. No, Ellen can't come here and tell us about black consciousness and Mandela sold out. Mandela did not sell out. Mandela is the reason we is the reason we are here. We have NSF fans. We have now a hundred times that we can buy our own two guys. It's everything good. As some would say, a suffocation. A suffocation, but for us, it's not a suffocation. I think we must have this English thing well. But also, the university does not reflect us. Mm -hmm. This thing is not a reflection of myself. That's why we are not surviving. We are failing here. We are not. This new way of being taught, it's new. There's a problem. For sure, a problem is how we were taught in high school. We, we see, and it's a problem, get to this day, regardless. Uh, and then. It's, it's, it's a struggle, everything, we see these statues of roads, we see everything, we're getting taught by white people for a very, very first time. Now, we have, we, there's actually, I had a sociology uh, tutor was from, England, me, from Germany, I couldn't hear that man, and I would not like it every time I went to, to the tat, because he has that uh, German accent, I couldn't hear him, like, serious. Mm. And I felt sociology also, I think he was also part of that thing, I, I got 48 in sociology. I felt sociology, I felt philosophy. Yeah, I almost felt in this first year thing. Yeah. I was like, hey, hey it's bad. It's, it's bad. And then we're discussing with the elders. Ah, I'm Africa, we're not, we're not surviving this place. And then now there's in the ESO, a discussion whereby blacks meet and then they conversate about this stuff. Because now we do find a home. Yeah, in Bezo, we, 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 we find a home. Yeah, but we reflect whereby we can talk black now. Yeah. But when you go to school, it's another, it's another thing. And then the curriculum, getting taught of Hobbes, uh, uh, getting taught of these men, now, uh, all of these white people, Marx and Max Weber and stuff, uh, white people. And then they start now with the falling of the statue. They're making jokes 2015 that the statue of 2014 that one day the statue of Rhodes will fall, and then we laugh. And then Macaulay starts to throw that, you know, that thing on the statue. And then the conversation now begins. Yeah, it begins. And then now to reflect and see other things. And then now, and then they speak of a decolonized, or oh, decolonization exists. You can know decolonization has existed way back in the day. But then we decolonize the education, what do we need? Whereby we have to ensure that. Hey, please tell me, my sister, when we are running out of time. So now, what does this mean? Uh, we, 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 we hear of these things and then. Uh, a funny, a funny part is that one of the funniest things is that at UCT was a university in Africa. It does not reflect Africa. We know how Africa is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the language it's department, there's a Sikosa and there's a Sisutu. Sikosa you can do it from first year until uh, all now, post and everything. 
So suit you can only do it for first and second year, and then you are done. So it's not a major. Mm -hmm. And then there's a flock of these European languages. There's many. There's Chinese. Chinese is not European. There's, but also Netherlands, Africans, and all of these other Spanish, Italian, and stuff. And then we're like, what does this mean? Also, a very small thing that you can make an example of. Now, a university in Africa does not reflect Africa even in languages. The first thing when you think of Africa, it's a language. But it does not. And then the culture, it does not. So all of the cultures, even the culture within the rest, those things when we do a certain thing, we do this other uh, funny, violent cultures whereby we sing. And that's that my quiet thing that people were fighting about. Whereby we sing those violent things and then we speak ugly of women and then we think it's making us mad and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we don't see we have this thing. But also, you know, we're excited because this way we are letting us and stuff. We sing and then we like imagine getting girls and, 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 and speaking as to calling other girls and we don't see just catfish. So those kinds of things and then the decolonization we are told about it's happening now in uh, different kinds of spaces in politics, in linguistics, in, in, in gender, in whatever, in terms of class and everything. But I feel like, yeah, so when you speak of it, it's firstly the reflection of yourself. So the university must reflect ourselves. That's how we see a decolonized kind of education. Don't just see having Mamukhe Chipagen being the VC, but still everything within the university. The cleaner, you know who the cleaner is in the university. You know who security guards are. You know where the lecturer is. The lecturer is white. The security guards are black. The cleaners are black. And everything. There's still that status quo of the black work. That are workers. Yeah. And then the whites are the staff. So the dichotomy between the worker and the staff. So then the terms of wages and, and, and everything. So not only within the curriculum, but also everything, the lives, ourselves, but the big question is how do we decolonize in education in a colonial country? And then it's a very tricky one. And then we're like, whoa. So the aim is to go back, but also we can start in small, smaller you know, things. And also, there is, Pokemon was saying, the education that we're getting in these township places has to ensure that we, we, we work with it. We're getting taught of Hitler in grade nine, we're being taught of Hitler, we're getting taught of the King Louis the Sixteenth and stuff. Even history does not reflect us, but I think now they are working because I was teaching there last week in history and they were teaching black consciousness. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit of a nice thing, but also does not reflect us. We have a life orientation subject which is very, very, very useless. Does not teach people about things like mental health, teach people about gender-based violence, about not being uh, do not exert your patriarchy to, to know these kinds of things because when you arrive here, it's just like, nah, these things are only white people's things, it's English. What is patriarchy? It's a cause mm. and stuff, which is some funny, funny questions. So, yeah, my stuff can cut me from there because I don't think I stop when I talk. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, I, 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 I'm going to, you know, kind of take us into the next topic, which is um, popular culture and you know, to continue this conversation of, you know, you know, a decol decolonized education within um, a, an African continent, you know, um, I think my experience, my first experience of a decolonized anything, decolonized education um, was Fees Must Fall. So uh, to think back five years ago kind of seems almost too far, but honestly, I remember it as if it was yesterday, you know. Um, uh, before I get into, you know, my experiences, um, uh, I'm not sure who it is, Kito, um, where were you um, when Fees Must Fall was happening and how successful do you think that movement has been um, five years later in, in articulating and achieving its goal of a free, decolonial and intersectional um, education? You know, bearing in mind everything that you've just said and everything that you've just highlighted now, um, you know, you now know of, you know, the conversation, the, the importance of intersectionality of, you know, we're not just speaking to patriarchy, but we're also speaking to sexism, we're also speaking, you know, to, to, to whiteness, we're speaking to all of these different um, intersectionalities that come together and, and make the black experience. So, yes, UCT is a um, global um is, is you know positions itself as a global university but what can it do for the local person and how does it then achieve those local goals um yeah and how successful has that movement been the fees must fall movement been in helping us achieve those local goals mm, mm. 
Yeah, I think I think we'll have a I don't think there's much. It depends on how we see life. Maybe I'm seeing it from a very optometrist now. Optom. But pessimistic. Yeah, pessimistic perspective. Yeah. I think so because the things of being black, we are to this day we have to because we are protesting of of of, of a free the colonial socialist uh, quality education. Mm-hmm. We have it. so it has to do yet to do also with things of funds because we say the fees must fall and then and then people are saying my mom we cannot study for free because there's no money in the country and stuff and then five hundred billion gets missing in front of our eyes and stuff and then we are quiet. So I think I don't think I'll, I'll still to this day listen to that kind of a conversation that I do not want to listen to. Back in the day, we are because there is money in the country, they eat it in front of our faces and it's these people's uh, parents were eating it and then they come and tell us these kinds of things. So I think, yeah, for sure we did succeed uh, the, in uh, yeah, being optimistic. I can say we did very, very much. Because for now, because I, I would also laugh after my thoughts, I would also laugh and say, thank you, uh, uh, Lord, my sport. Because now at least we do uh, have uh, black lecturers. Yeah, but there was a time 2017 when I was finalized. I had everyone who taught me that year, year was were mothers. Yeah. So I was nothing was nice. And then you feel that you know most you feel that connection and also especially when I was doing this course. That man of man uh, teaches you and takes you like a man and also it's a small class. So she has that high school uh, way of teaching it, and then you know this is a parent too. It's not just uh, you know, almost as we call these people by 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 name, it's our lecturers. But yeah, nah, even yeah, no, we need that space of a mother and stuff. So that can we do have them? As much as the curriculum is still much of problematic because mm-hmm. there there there's people who are still adamant on teaching this uh, violent thing. And the, in politics, we have people like Greg, people like Lois Mushaba, Tim Reid, who who do teach black consciousness, pan Africanism, and all that entails. Fanonistas, yeah. So, mm-hmm. but I think in terms of Imani, I wanted to speak on Imani at this other point. In terms of Imani, you still have to play poverty on to get a uh, funding from the school, you have to show how poor you are. Yeah. yeah that's, if there, it's, it's, each time you think about that thing, it's violent when you sit down mm-hmm. with yourself with, to show how poor you, you are mm-hmm. and how much do you need that money, whereas the money is there. And mm-hmm. to show. I need my then there's a good chance that you might be told that no, you can afford your not poor. Imagine. You still have to panic up and send the money home. Uh, you have to do many, many other jobs, and still you get to be told, uh, well, you, 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 you cannot get funding and stuff. And then you have stress of your academics, you have to not fail because there's a thing, there's people waiting for you at home, what? They give black debts and stuff. So those other things contribute to your side. So it's not only the academics that you deal with in here, mm-hmm. the academic project, but also family and other, other things. So I think. But yeah, so those are things the uh, answer that I think there was a, a, a failure because for years, uh, Fismas Fall became a, a seasonal thing every September, every October. Yeah. We are protesting every September. Maybe they say it's lucky because we had uh, COVID and stuff. Yeah, because each and every year there be that protest. And then in, in January, you know, because it's nice here to see kids, the Ivory Towers, in, in CPUT, in UWC, and other uh, technicals, students would protest. Because they want their their their, their, their debts uh, cleared. The thing of clearing debts, even here to see things again. Mm. So each and every year, we have to always perform, we have to perform, so that mm. uh, you can get this funding. And it's black people who does these things. It's always blacks. You know, protesters can throw out the word. It's black people who protest. And also, mm. it's a matter of stomach. We are hungry. We need the money. So I think, yeah. Uh, and then it gets in pop culture. Then it gets uh, romanticized. You see. In, in, in Films now, in, in you watch the river, they tell about the thing must fall. And now the fallism loses its essence because fallism was based on pan Africanism, black consciousness, and black radical feminism. So mm-hmm. all that is white falls. Now, even black things now are made to fall. Anything now, if we happen to do funny things, they say little must fall. Uh, how, why would a black person fall? What was the essence of fallism? What does fallism mean? So I think. A problem in our society because there was not that much engagement between the students and the society. That's why there was some missing thing happening in there because now everything that is black is made to fall. Mm-hmm. It's funny. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kito. 
yeah yes i'm not gonna even add anything else after that um poking can you share your thoughts so i was at the university of the free state during the height of his must fall i am now at the university of the western cave and these are two different experiences you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I left to UFS, you know, to the Free State, so I'm not able to tell you how that university is right now, but I'm sure there's been some progress. A lot of institutions post FISMAS for hired vice chancellors who happen to be people of color, who happen to be women and I guess do do their position their positionalities do adapt well to the mandate of you know the colonial colonialism. Another thing Gito just brought to mind is the language policy. A lot of universities change their language policy for us or for students to be taught in one language which is English. Um, some see it as progress, I do think it's progress, but why should it be English? English is not an African language, but at the same time, that's the language that we can all speak. Not many of us can speak Afrikaans and it's an oppressor's language. So yes, I think there has been a lot of progress. There's still a long time, long way to go. I mentioned earlier and how universities seem to be employing a lot of black staff. If you look at... Um, the rates of enrollments of PhDs and masters programs. There's a lot of black people, so that's another point move in a positive direction. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's a good, it's a good thing also for the for the country. You know, it's, we're thinking about it too much at a university level. It's a good thing for the country when a citizen citizenry, it's black citizen citizenry, can be educated as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, I'm not so much a huge advocate for decolonization because it's more about the work mm-hmm. it's more about what you're doing in the work mm-hmm. you know yes it's a project that we're all working towards but we will never get to a decolonized world <laughs> but no one wants to talk about decolonization because it's, it's 2050 mm-hmm. So, I guess man, yeah, and diff- people in different fields approach the question different. But in contemporary art and cultural production, decolonization is a tired uh, uh, discourse. You know, we're looking at other things now, but there has been progress in um, epistemology. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I just always find it interesting to 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 bring it up, to bring decolonization up. You know, when I'm speaking to people who are still in the institutions. So, you know, um, just to defend the the, the topic at hand, um, it's 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 important for me to talk to talk about progress and you know where we where we come from and where we're going. Um, and yes, it's a t- it may be a tired like discourse, especially within the you know the contemporary kind of art fields. Um, but but I still feel like you know, as Gita was saying, that if every year come September, we're gonna you know start gathering as people and then start you know start demanding things. Um, to what end is 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 this? Um, uh, March that we're doing constantly putting our bodies on the line um, for for the same thing which is you know decolonial education um, but you know to take a, a closer in uh, to take a closer um, look at um, you guys as individuals um, we're gonna go to our last topic for the night which is branding as cultural work and the question that I have um, for you today and again it is a broad one um, what as a cultural worker, what lessons are you currently learning? Um, and and I would really want you guys to think of this question in light of you know what this year has been to you, what it's meant for you as you know cultural workers, as people in the arts field, as scholars, as you know just individual people in your everyday lives. 
um yeah so maybe poking you can start us off it's very revealing you know we work in that cultural space where we use symbolism creativity and creativity is, is destructive mm. uh, in its essence you have to break to make mm -hmm. so as writers as storytellers where where as academics you know where we're always talking about something that someone else has made you know how someone interpreted something in a way that is interesting and then we make conversations out of that and i think that's been the problem all along you know <laughs> like where academia especially where you you writing about what other people do you know and that's that would usually be like white people writing about black art or talking about you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and then, then, then there's a complaint when are black people writing about their own work you know <clears throat> and for me it's like what the hell man you know it's like what's going on <laughs> like really what's going on like i'll just get to my point now what i'm learning at the moment is that practice practice is as important as the thinking together if you can put them together you are stuck you are stoppable so mm -hmm. i'm i'm trying to practice and and think at the same time about my work and yeah man just knowing that everything that we're doing here is made up so you can either be that person who's writing about someone doing some something interesting or you can get up and do that interesting thing and someone else can do the writing mm -hmm. so yeah that's me yeah or you could do both i mean that's that's for me the joy in being a culture worker right is that you can think and do at the same time and then obviously you can be you know the the your own a cultural critic um and obviously then invite other people to to hear what you've done and to to hear what to see what you what you've thought um kito over to you i think there's still a very 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 like 625 varies way to go there's a very long way back yeah we come from from very far and there's still a very long way to go. Me, I'm very occupied with the theme of of of, of blacks. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the love of blacks or black consciousness, which I think it's too much of an admin for us because those those artists who occupy themselves with the black thing always thinking of the black and stuff. Yeah. It's not bringing in that much of money, yeah, especially in this South African country of ours. I'm not eating in table. I'm doing this different art things. But I'm eating very minimal. Mm. Yeah, but it's difficult to be a black uh, artist in the country of ours and stuff. Yeah, but especially those uh, who like to act as if they want to be advocates of, of, of black people. But also, I'm, I think I do the art that I reflect of myself and my reality. So, uh, as a self on its own, I'm a self that is not eating, a self that is deprived of many other things and self that is still... Uh, marginalized so for sure as an artist i don't think i am default divorced from myself as an artist the struggles that i have as a black artist are the struggles that i have as a black person mm -hmm. so there's a chance that other black people yeah they flourish in terms of other things but also the reality the reality still is as is for you that as mm -hmm. it's bad it's an everywhere as black people so as artists living ourselves, we still gonna go through those difficult things, and yeah, some will flourish there and there and there. And also, uh, some it's they said we're not gonna succeed. We don't. The industry doesn't care how good you are. Yeah. If either you are not what is needed, then you are not. You can work hard. There's others who do work hard and they work hard there and there and there. You know which buttons to press. I'm not trying to press these buttons. I'm just other people and they press. But it's a reflection you know in other you always for sure you yourself you complain by seeing tv or listening to music or whatever there are artists who are flourishing but you feel like hey i'm gonna to be quite honest i don't think this artist is yeah uh, overpowered his power is, 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 is whatever so i don't know i think 
I really am not sure how, but also my aim is to ensure that I, 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 I transcend, I, uh, there is a transition in, in my arts because the politics of the stomach are really much uh, 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 serious and we are not getting any yak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the funny part of still in the social sciences, I think we had this conversation last week, but there's not that money in social sciences and then again, I'm going towards the arts. Mm. There is money, but there is not money. Yeah, but, oh, maybe I just don't know where to press and stuff. So wherever I stumble up on, I get deprived of, of other things. By saying I get deprived, I'm not saying that these people may be holding back. The uh, situations or conditions of people included is different things coming into play. So what I've learned is that there's still a long way. I don't know what should happen, but I think first, if if it like, you can get um, some back, but also the unity within the blacks. Mm -hmm. I think black people need to unite and a very principled unity. I need I need that not a kind of a unity that is based now. Let's just unite here, but a very very principled one. If we start there, but also going to the selves self be conscious of ourselves but the unity within the blacks the leaders so we stop between people because they we think they come from congo we beat people because they come from Zimbabwe. yeah and then, and then we beat people because they are women and then we do violent mm -hmm. violent things so the unity within the blacks from all spheres yeah but hey, it's still a long way to go yeah, because black people don't love black people they yes. love themselves maybe they do but yeah, there's a pretentious relationships within the black so i think that something to be done and for the final part of the episode can you guys reveal who you're going to be donating your 1000 rand to intervention by 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 cultural workers <clears throat> yeah but there's uh, i'm not sure if you know uh Fusumsi. Ngomo, yeah, obviously. Susi Gomo, Pura Jack, and Alison Clare. They are running this dope intervention called Dieting, Dieting for the Kids. So I'll, I'll share the link with you, Dieting for the Kids. And uh, they do this dieting, they do, uh, I think on a monthly, because uh, this one was the third one, the fourth one, yeah, but they did it this Sunday. So they invite people, people buy tickets. And then they there's food, there's music, there's books, being sold stalls everywhere. Then there's people performing. So people can be go from Gauteng, from Jose, uh, and, and Laliboy from Johannesburg. So two artists were from Johannesburg this time around. It's a kept on based kind of a project. So uh, they were performing there, but also it's some sort of a fundraising because there's a certain uh, family that they'll be building a house for. Yeah, so that's why they do those things. The money that they, they, they do, they don't eat it. This big eat it they donate so the they also released a, a gofundme uh, page so i'll share the link with you booking um Gito, it's been a great honor to have you today on today's episode um i will be sure to contact you guys um just to you know be in touch about when the the, the episode will be released and to also get in touch um with you guys more about when and how um, to get in touch with the organization that you've chosen so that we can donate to them.